Hey, it's Rob. You're watching The Everyday Investor, the hottest real estate investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. We've got a fantastic show lined up, not only because Ka Carmen Caponaro is here, who is a great friend of mine, really smart, makes lots of money, enjoys life, and is a sponsor of this show. I'm so always grateful to have her here. But we're going to be talking about how we can invest our registered funds, our registered monies, and we'll find out even what that means, um, into mortgages and be able to get a a, uh, very nice return, whether it's monthly, quarterly, sometimes yearly, um, and then even as well, two, three years later, be able to receive some more profits. Uh, Carmen, it's always great to have you on the show. Can I have a hug? Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I love when you come on the show because I, I'm always nurtured. I learn so much, uh, always inspired, but most importantly, by how grounded you are, how spiritual you are. You know, it's it's not... If you know what to do, it's not that hard to make money um, if you know what you're doing. But it is hard to put God, family, friends before that. We all mm -hmm. say, if we, we write down our priorities, we'll all say it. But show me your day timer and then I really know what you value. What I appreciate about you is you actually do value this. Where, where do you think that comes from? Uh, were you taught that? Were there some challenges in life that you said I'll never go back to again, and so therefore I want to live? Where, no, that's where does an that interesting come from? Question. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think it's all, it's both. I, how I grew up with my family, uh, old European, very close, um, and my family had faith as well, so that came along, and uh, and then also in life I met my. Uh, you know, I've, I've been challenged with certain circumstances and things like that, which brought me into knowing how important family is and my faith. Yeah. And that's how it all came about. So, And it is challenging when you're in business and you're in the money world to keep yourself grounded and focused on what's really important. Yeah. So, um, and, and I have to check myself now and then because I could get all wrapped up in Yeah. Because there's so so many exciting things but, happening. But, but at least you acknowledge that that's yeah. your, you know, your nature. It's the same thing with me. I, <clears throat> I have to be very careful. I'm so grateful to have a wonderful uh, woman on my side to be able to, yes. you know, keep me me in check. Because when I when there's something where there's you know where I just kind of you know I'm doing the show, it's done in an hour. Yeah, I'm done. But if it was you know if I owned the studio, the production, and and I, and, and there's just you can keep going and you can keep going oh, and there's yeah. no end. And and what about my wonderful children and my friends and all that kind of stuff? So money yeah. does help, um, but you don't even need money to be able to enjoy the best things in life, such no, as relationship. You Absolutely. You know? uh, yeah, so, that's amazing. Uh, that being said, don't turn the channel. We're going to talk about how to make some money because it does help, and we can do a lot of benevolent uh, uh, things with that. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about uh, investing money um, using registered funds, right? Yep. Investing our money in mortgages yep. uh, using registered funds as opposed to, I guess, just cash out cash. of pocket. Yeah. So what, what does it mean, registered funds? Well, basically, if you have an RSP, TFSA, um, anything registered, um, you can actually use that money to invest in a mortgage investment. It does have to go through um, a specific company, um, and there's very limited companies today that allow for you to register or, or put your money into a mortgage investment. Yeah. Um, and that's why we're bringing on someone today from Community Trust, that, and that's who we work with, and we found a really great working relationship. So it's basically using your registered funds, any RSPs, TFSAs, I believe Lyra, and, and I'm going to let Ed from Community Trust go into Maybe the Maybe RESPs. RESPs, yeah. absolutely. Okay. And use those monies because most people aren't earning anything. They yeah. just sit there, and yeah. they think it's a redundant waste of time, and they really don't put any effort into them. Or if they have, it's just sitting there not doing much, and eventually they're going to retire, and it's just going to deplete when they, when they get there. So, so this way it can grow. And it's amazing what we can do with it. So Ed's going to come on from Community Trust, and he's going to share with us why why his you know uh, outfit um, can direct my registered funds into mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I'm, yeah, I look forward to talking to him because I'm yes. wondering why you know if I have my investments through RBC Direct Investing or yes. TD Waterhouse or Scotia McLeod or whatever it is, why can't they do it and why wouldn't they do it? Because you're right, there is only one or two you know very few people that uh, will we'll do that. And, it's, and what's really cool about it is it stays registered. It's not like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're not taking your money out. Yeah, I'm not you're getting not, taxed on it or yeah, anything like that. No, it's, it's actually, you're just keeping it under that umbrella. Yeah. And you're moving those funds into another investment vehicle. And any of the returns are going right back into your account. So your account just grows. Okay. And it's wonderful. So you don't, you're not taxed on it. I mean, yeah. you have to pay tax, obviously, when you take it out when you retire. Sure. Yeah. But in the meantime, you can, it's deferred. Yeah. And it's wonderful. 
Yeah, so. I mean, I, you know, the, the, uh, as real estate investors, a lot of them don't have um, RSPs, and then a lot do, you know, especially when they match, you know, when they match, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your workplace matches what you put in, or with the 20% uh, the no-brainer for the RESPs, mm -hmm. you put in your 2000 or whatever it is. And TFSA now? TFSA. Is a great you can, thing. You can so. uh, after-tax dollars, so we can use that as well. Yes. Um, is that, yeah. th that's considered uh, registered? TFSA, yes. Yes. I guess? Okay. Is it? Yeah, I, I don't think know. So. We'll find out. Ed will tell us. Yeah, so um, he'll tell us. And then, I know more about the investing side. So for me, my strength is, you know, uh, where to put the money, yeah. how to make your money make money. We yeah. can make lots of money. We've got amazing projects to do that. But, uh, you know, it's how do we get that money there to invest. Once we get it there, we put it out. And we've got a couple of uh, your friends, uh, clients that have been investing and uh, enjoying some monthly cash flow. So I yeah. look forward to yeah, having them come on the show as well. Yes, Carmen, it's great, great to have you on. And uh, when we come right back, we're going to talk to Ed from Community Trust. We're going to learn how to make money investing registered funds in mortgages. You don't want to miss this show. It's going to be a great one. Thanks for watching. Whenever you're considering to invest in real estate, always ask four questions to start. Number one, what's the return on investment? Number two, when do I get that return along with the money I put in? Number three, what is the minimum cash amount needed? And number four, what is the risk in the worst case scenario? Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We're talking about how we can make money using our registered funds, investing in mortgages. Uh, Carmen Cabernero, my guest co-host, is with me on the show. And we have Ed Wells here. Ed, it's great to uh, have you. Rob, nice to meet you. From Community Trust. That's correct. So Community Trust is an outfit where I can take my registered funds wherever they're sitting now. Correct. And wherever they're sitting now, what, what, what do you, I mean, I've heard the terminology custodian is that kind of a we are we are a trustee of registered accounts so okay uh, community trust has been around since 1975 incorporated then we have currently 1.2 billion dollars under assets under administration wow so, mm -hmm. you know we've been around for 40 years so yeah. people may not know us you know in the public but what we are known for within the business world is our commercial mortgages coast to coast our residential mortgages here in Ontario and of course our GIC business and, uh, and of course we have our great partnerships who are working with community trust where the register accounts to invest. So, so basically what happens, um, Carmen, is I want to invest in mortgages. We've got certain developments, per se, that are going on. Mm -hmm. A group of people um, lend the developer, what, you know, five, ten million dollars, whatever it is, that developer, um, we get a little piece when the, the development's over get a little bit of cash flow, uh, we can design it many different ways. Right, so uh, ProFunds comes in, uh, a builder or developer in, in this circumstance, uh, speaking of this type of lending, yeah. uh, because there are two types, there's private lending and individual lending, which would be yourself to one other individual, yeah. and then there's more of a group kind of lending, uh, which we're talking about at the moment, and builders or developers would come to our company, we have a sister company called Valor Capital, and Valor does the due diligence on the project, so we're very, very specific on value. All of our projects have appraisals today. What does it value at today? What is it going to be worth when the project is complete? Yeah. We do a full assessment and analyze every single deal until we feel 100% comfortable, and then we release it to our investors, and then investors have the opportunity to invest using registered funds. We specifically work exclusive with Community Trust. We've had experiences with other companies in the industry. Yeah and weren't as favorable, very difficult, very challenging, so we're very happy to have this relationship now, and now yeah. we can bring all of our investors that way. And um, so what we do then is we work in conjunction with these deals, and uh, it's a lot of work for us as well because there's tons and tons of paper, yeah. but it's registered funds, and it's registered on a mortgage investment. So yeah, Because I can't take my, so let's just say Rav has, you know, uh, $50,000 in, RSPs, yes, right. Or Ed, what else? What else are, are considered registered funds that we would use? Well, we we find that we see TFSAs, TFSAs, which, which okay. is 
which we're we're seeing people more and more people use. So that's a great thing. And a TFSA is 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 a is a vehicle uh, where I take after tax dollars and I put it in there, and they allow me to put five, ten thousand a year, whatever it mm -hmm. is. Correct. Um, and if I've never done anything, I can go back even in arrears, and I the, think it's up to forty-five thousand or something right, like that. Right. Yeah. So you, we're seeing uh, more and more groups. Who are coming in with that forty-five, fifty thousand dollar chunks? Yeah. Uh, who are investing and enabling them to, to to make that investment? And the nice thing about the TFSA is I can. Uh, there's no tax. What it's after tax dollars. Correct. As that grows, tax -free, it's right? tax free. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tax uh, free savings account. That's right. Um, and uh, so that's that's a great vehicle. So registered fund, uh, RSPs, RSP, TFSA, TFSAs, uh, locked in accounts. So anybody who's made have a pension from another organization that they used to work for, they can transfer so that in. Lira. Lira is locked in. Yeah. And also RIFs too, right? So your retirement Riffs, yeah. income funds too. Okay, great. So so I have that. So Rav has $50,000 of one of those. Right. Okay. And it's sitting with, you know, whoever it's sitting, TD my Waterhouse, bank or TD Waterhouse. It's sitting right. with right. TD Waterhouse. And TD Waterhouse, why, here's the question, why can I not direct Carmen or, or why can I direct it from there? Yeah. Um, We've got to move it to a place, and and I've experienced this. I kind of know the answer to what I'm asking. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reasons, I mean, I missed out on a deal because it was sitting at one of the big five banks, and they just wouldn't move yeah. it. They would take their time. Most and I of guess, them have yeah. moved out of that completely. They yeah. used to. TD yeah. did. Yeah. Scotia did. They're all kind of moving away from the self-directing to mortgage investments. Yeah. And um, that's why we're very limited. We might have five, six, maybe institutions. That I'm aware of that actually allow for you to self-direct your money into okay. mortgage investment. Yeah, it is a real, it is a focus for us. So yes. Other companies have decided to get out of that that type of a business. So from a registered trustee side of the business, that's what we focus in on. So we're one of the groups that allows people through a self-directed account to invest into mortgages. They are CRA eligible investors. Self-directed account as that's opposed right. to what? Oh, versus a registered account that they may have that may pick up at a at a bank branch. Got that it. is just, you know, you're buying. I get to decide where, because at the end of the day, right. it's really, I mean, what does it stand for? Savings plan, right? It's Correct. It's really, but when I ask somebody, oh, yeah, you have RSPs, but where is it? How is it making money? They don't know that much, and, and, and we should at least know. So what I get to do is I get to take my RSPs and self-direct them. So we're going to move them from wherever it's sitting, let's call it TD Waterhouse, right. and we're going to move it to Community Trust. Correct. But it still stays in the registered plan. Absolutely. Those registered funds are transferred from one location to, to Community Trust. Okay. So once we, an individual signs up and has an account with Community Trust, we assist them through their transfer program. So they transfer the money from this location, that financial institution, to Community Trust in a safe environment. Yeah. And we monitor, it's a monitored program, so we watch that money, we watch your funds go from your former location to community trust. Yeah. When um, I make money on this, Carmen, uh, I'm talking more so the cash flow part, the, mo the money that comes in monthly. That goes I, back into the plan directly. It goes into mm -hmm. the plan, or I can keep it, but obviously, like anything, I get taxed on it. Correct. Right? So actually, this thing just can keep growing within the plan, um, and I get to put it into in investing in mortgages. So many people just keep rolling it. So once they're paid out on our mortgages, so our mortgages are usually anywhere between a one and a three year term. Yeah. And when they're paid out, the money goes back, including all their returns are in there now, and they can reinvest that whole amount of money. Mm -hmm. So, and, and people keep turning it. So we, we did a calculation with the, with the compounding of it in a six year period. It's it's twenty percent of return a year on average is what we're seeing for our investments. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's phenomenal for people. So if you can imagine what that does for your registered plans, yeah. right? And there aren't any special criteria required for uh, qualifying for investing in these investment vehicles. For an example, like in an exempt market, you have to qualify. You have to be an accredited investor. Where with mortgage lending, you do not have to. Yeah. You know, you don't have to qualify. To, yeah. To the other ones fall under the. Yeah. Securities Commission. This falls right. under fiscal, where right. where um, I don't know with correct terminology or not, a little more lenient. You don't. There's not a lot of loopholes that you necessarily have to. Yeah. Which is which is, yeah, which is yes. great. And a, lenient is a certain word. It's, it's very strict as well, but yeah. at, mm -hmm. at the same time, the criteria is very different. Yeah. So uh, it works out very. You don't well have to qualify of, based on income or net exactly, wealth or those exactly. types of things. Um, and and so uh, there's obviously a few dollars of fees. Uh, you know, right. for you to be able to watch this. What, what for? So if, let's say we're in a three-year plan. It's my money, my fifty thousand dollars in my RSPs is sitting with Community Trust. 
couple hundred dollars a year, or how does that work? Yeah, we do have annual fees that, yeah. that are disclosed right up front when yeah. a person opens up their account. Uh, so they know exactly what they're paying for yeah. those those yeah. fees. But minimal. I mean, but uh, it's, of it's market uh, type of fees, and uh, and you know it's nothing outrageous. So that's yeah. the that's the important part for people to understand. And the reason why we're doing this is because it needs to be uh, I, it needs to be arm's length, right? Mm -hmm. I can't I can't take my arm's length, meaning I can't take my own RSPs and buy my own principal residence with them, or buy an even investment property with them. And so this way. It's 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 great. I've transferred them to community trust, mm -hmm. but I can lend Carmen my money to somebody else. Yes, you right? can lend me your money. Yes, right. I can lend you, and you lend me. <laughs> Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great if there's an exchange program like well, that? Well, you're that not for allowed different, to do that. Or you're is not that allowed a to have a direct swap. Not a direct. Swaps aren't allowed. How about the three of us? I give to you. you he gives, and we do it this way. Can you do that? A three-way? Maybe. There you go. There's a little... Maybe that's for a different episode. Yes. 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 Um, I'll come back to that, too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, you don't know, so that's great. I have that's a question great. for Ed, though. And yeah. I, Certainly, I, go ahead. If you have funds that are invested, uh, let's say, currently in a stock. Correct. And you want to move it, you're at with another institution. Mm -hmm. Can we move it in that stock to community trust, or do you have to cash it out first and then move it? Well, you can move it in. Let me try. And let me try. Let me try. What you say? Okay. Let me try. I don't think you have to cash it out, but I think we have to take the stock, bring it back to our custodian, and then move it to community. Right or wrong? Well, you know, it's better if a person uh, comes in cash, so they can come in kind. That's to their, the, the lingo to the there. Self, in kind. It can come yes. in kind to yeah. community trust, but the vast majority of individuals who are who are coming into community trust with through Carmen's group. Through pro funds, are really are looking to make that investment. So it's best for them to make sure that they go into cash prior to the transfer. Mm -hmm. But when you say go into cash, you don't mean ca like no, it's not not cash. What it not means is if I have fifty thousand dollars in Shoppers Drug Mart stock, right, and I'm with TD Waterhouse, yes, I bring, I, 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 I exit on the that Nasdaq investment. or the TSX yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. Um, from Shoppers Drug Mart, yep. bring it back to TD Waterhouse. I guess that's what you consider the cat in, in right. cash. Right, so they sell and then the stock. Transfer. So it. it does show up as, say, a bank account number or a cash account number. And when we do that transfer, that transfer is that dollar amount. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing it back. The terminology is cash, but it's not, I'm no, bringing $50,000. No, it's, not, it's $50, not a bag of money. Yes, that gets got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay, right, great. So another, another thing is... Um, with uh, people investing with multiple accounts. So there isn't any restri restrictions on your end, right, with community trust. So uh, let's say someone has five different That's a great question. Because I have, I, have, I want to invest $50,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 are in TFSA, 20 are in uh, uh, Lira, and 10 is... Uh, Just a regular in, uh, RSP. RSP. Yeah. yeah. So we can do that? Yes, absolutely. You can have an unlimited amount of accounts as long as they are the registered accounts. So... It's so, not like an RESP where you have one account at one location. This way you can have an RSP, TFSA, LIF, RIF, whatever the case may be. Got it. Yeah, because people have multiple accounts. However, when investing in the mortgages with our company specific, um, our minimums are typically 50000 50000 okay. Um, however... That's why I said I have 50000 Yeah, okay. perfect. So you're, you're approved. Yeah, you, can, you can invest. Yes. And... Um, so we want to make sure that we're limi limiting that to three accounts. So if you have, let's say, RSPs and a TFSA, and you have cash, and that makes up fifty thousand, we're fine with that. Okay. But once it gets into four, three, four, five, it gets it's it's enormous amount of work. So we can't afford to have so many accounts in one. And investment. I can't do Rabs, you know, fifty thousand and Sinead's fifty thousand in the same. Those are two separate. Vehicles like Rav's mm -hmm. Rav with his RSPs. Yes, Sinead, sorry, Sinead's my wife. Right. Uh, Sinead, uh, you know that's uh, we can't put those together. Right. They're two separate kinds. Those of are things. two separate. Yeah. Yeah. Two separate uh, uh, vehicles there. Um, so process about setting up. How difficult is that? We try to make the process of getting an application uh, as simple as possible. Uh, either you can go online through www.communitytrust.ca. We prefer to work with your group because they understand and work with your clients. So mm -hmm. they can go directly through your office, either mm -hmm. through paper or online, and uh, the application is set up within uh, 24 to 48 hours. And how long does it take to get the money there? Well, the money the transfer program takes anywhere between three to six weeks, depending well, it, on the... It depends on, it depends on where it's held. Right, yes. That's so what I'm saying. My money in one of the big five didn't get to a deal. I missed yeah. out. Yeah. Right, so because some, some take longer. It's not, it's not community trust's fault. 
it's where the person has to let go the of the relinquishing you know? right, right. institution. Yes, that's correct. That's and the, so that's you it. know, they some have retention programs, or have as you well know, and yeah. they want to give you a call and they'll say, "Just a second, are you sure you want to make that investment?" Exactly. So they'll yeah. hold on. We're not going to make money anymore. Are you sure you want to <laughs> you make that? Right, right. So, but you uh, know, and then we help that out. We we do have a follow up program, so we do follow up and make sure that you know if you're transferring the funds over, we give them a shout and say, "Hi, we're looking for." Uh, Rabs uh, a couple of bucks here, and uh, you know, are we expecting that anytime soon? So we do that help. Great to have you on the show. Rab, thank, thank you, you so much. much very nurtured. So we're coming. talking thank to Ed, Ed Wells from Stop Community Trust. Thank you. When thank we come you. back, we're going to uh, hear from one of the investors how they're making money using the registered funds and investing in mortgages. Thanks for watching, everyone. Did you know that typically you cannot lend uh, your RSPs as a mortgage on your own property? Most registered, registered plan holders will require your mortgage investment to be arm's length, meaning a third party investor according to CRA guidelines. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We're talking about how to make money using registered funds, investing in mortgages, getting monthly cash flow, making a little bit at the end of a project, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we have Carmen Carbonaro here, uh, guest co-host, uh, wealth of knowledge, and uh, Claire Petrichok, who is an investor in three different projects. Claire, it's great to have you Hi. on the show. Pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you. For, uh, for, for being here. Um, so you're investing your registered funds in mortgages, enjoying some monthly cash flow, and you have three different projects right now. We do, yes. So we took advantage of, we've used TFSA, yep. RRSP, and also cash. Okay, great. And so three different projects on the go. And the way that when you make money in your RRSP, it stays, the profits stay in there until whenever you decide to, you know, I think you have from the ages of what, 65 to 72 or something, I don't know. Or you can take it out early. Or you take it early and pay a little bit more tax. Taxes. Yeah. Uh, with cash, obviously, you will get taxed on it because whenever we uh, we live in a wonderful country and for it to, to work, we've got to pay into our social justice system, if you will. Right. And then with the TFSA, you'll never pay a tax on that because it's a tax-free savings account. And what I love about that even is you can take money out, put it back in, yes. continue to um, add to it every year, whatever they give us, the five to $10,000 kind of thing. So good for you. So you're in three different projects. Um, for the viewers at home, obviously, we always ask those four questions. What's the return on investment? So, Carmen, typically, uh, we're going to look at one of uh, Claire's projects, but typically, um, what's the return on investment in the mortgage world kind of a range? What, what do you see? Okay, so typically in the industry, you will see on first mortgages, yep. um, anywhere between, let's say, 6 and 10%. Okay, so first mortgages mean Rav, Rav needs to uh, borrow money, Claire is going to lend Rav money. I have no other mortgages uh, yeah. on there, correct? Yeah, and yep. so they're just a first. She's in first position to get yes. paid back, yes. all that kind of stuff. So yeah. she would get a little bit less because there's less risk, if you will. I would say, yeah. Okay. You're in a first position mortgage, and people would say, well, why on earth would anyone borrow money for that? Well, a lot of investors use private money to close on a property really quickly, Absolutely. negotiating, um, if it's a vacant building, You're the and queen things like of that. that. Yeah, and I love that. I use well. it all the time. Yes. So, um, so you have that, and then a second mortgage, um, and 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 it's all about a loan to value. So right. people need to take that into consideration. Yeah. It doesn't mean if there's a lot of equity. That Rab has a lot of collateral, if you will. Yeah, she might she'll come into second place behind, you know, maybe a bank or yeah, a, maybe the so bank's so mortgage forth. is locked in, and you needed to extract some funds for a project, or you want to renovate your triplex or yeah. something. Um, then you can get a second mortgage. So rates on second mortgages, and that's depending on the loan to the value of the real estate again, yeah. could be anywhere between 10 and 12, 14% in okay. that range. Great. range. So. And, and so, yeah, so we always want to ask that question. So on first mortgages, 6 to 8%. Uh, on a second mortgage, anywhere from 10 to 14%. So you are involved in a, uh, three projects. The one we're going to look at today, yes. what are you making on that? What's your projected return on investment? So that's going to be a 14% um, per annum. So 14%. 14% 14 uh, per annum. Yep. And then the second question we ask is when do you get these, the, these monies? Yep. In your case, you're getting a portion monthly. 
and then the, the, the another portion at the end. Exactly. Yep. And, so and how long was this term? Yeah, it was a one year term. One year term. Yeah. Okay, great. So Claire's ROI on this project is 14%. Mm -hmm. That's uh, not too bad for, for you know, writing a, for writing a check. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so 14%. It's a one year term. That's right. All right. And then what was the amount, you know, we always ask what's the minimum cash amount needed. Yes. I think maybe you put in a little bit more than what was the minimum. Yep. Um, tell me what you put in here. Yep. So I believe the minimum was 50 and okay. I went in with 66. 66, 66 it's, yeah. it's broken down into two components. Okay. So I took advantage of the TFSA. All right. So we've got $46,000 in TFSA. Okay. So you put 46 k in with your TFSA. Correct. Yep. And then it's 20000 in cash. 20000 in cash because I'm assuming you filled up your room on the TFSA. That's right. Right. Now, how challenging was it for you to get the TFSA set up? No, it was great. It's, it's very smooth. It's really just, it's just paperwork, really. Mm -hmm. That's it. And so you just coordinate with ProFund's office, yeah. mm -hmm. and then they help you fill up the paperwork. And that's it. Now you have, a, you have a, a registered account, a TFSA, yeah. and, um, and then, of course, you maximized it, which is that, is that the correct? I mean, we're up to 46000 yeah, now? Yeah, I think it's 46500 maybe, okay. I think, if you haven't contributed. Okay. Yeah, so it's right, right near the and maximum. And then you put some more cash. So you're $66,000 into this, yes. and you're making 14% annualized. Correct. How is that? First of all, what is that number? What's 14% of 66000 Yeah, so that's 9240 Okay, so 9000 240. So that's how much money you're making. Correct. All right. How is this 9,240 being paid to you within the one year? Okay. So it's basically 7% per month and then there's a 7% lender's bonus at the well, end. It's, yeah. 7% interest only annually. Yeah. And it's uh, it's calculated interest only. So it's paid monthly. Got it. Got it. So we, yeah. so 7% you're getting, um, it's, it's, it's over the year. Yes. But it's it's paid monthly. Yes. Correct? And and payments start 30 days after the closing, like like a traditional mortgage on your home. Okay. So your interest will come to you every month and it's direct deposited into the account of your choice. Now if you're with your TFSA, it goes back into the TFSA, but if it's cash, it exactly. goes into your bank account. Okay. So exactly. you can just see the deposits coming in every month. So ninety two forty divided by two is what? What's nine nine thousand? It's uh four thousand six twenty, I think. 4620 so that's what you're going to get um, at the end of one year. Correct. And then you're also going to get 4620 divided by 12 paid each month. Yes. Which equals what? That equals $385 per month. Nice. Okay, so you invested $66,000. You're getting paid $385 per month for a year. And at the end of that year, you're also getting 46.20, which equals the 7% here, 7% here, total annual return of 14%. Exactly. For writing a check. Yes. That's okay. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So yeah. it's very passive. Very passive. Uh, the amount of work that's involved really is at the beginning. So setting up your TFSA or getting your funds into community trust. And then it's just going through the investment documentation that we provide our investors to make sure you're comfortable. Yeah. And then you make the decision and then it's the paperwork and then getting the funds off to the lawyer. So that's your work for this investment. So now I will say to people, and I like to um, mention this, when, when investing in mortgages, the actual closing day yeah. and the actual payout date isn't really, a, like there is a maturity date and there is a closing date on paper. However, there's so many variables in our industry with how many people it takes to, to put this together, that the timing is off. So uh, if we say it's going to close December 1st, it might not close until the 15th because uh, lawyers are sure. we're waiting for this, waiting for title search, and all of these course. different moving parts. So people need to realize that you need flexibility and also on the payout. So if we say it's going to mature um, in, let's say, December 1 in 2017, you might not get your money till maybe the 15th or the 20th. But sure. that doesn't mean your returns aren't being earned still. Every you're going to earn money on your money until it's until the money goes back into your account. Got it. So interest is paid up until the day goes back to you. Yeah. So, uh, but so you're still they, making fourteen percent over a twelve month. Absolutely. Time so period. it might take a couple more weeks longer. Yeah. I've seen some take thirty days, forty five days. Yeah. Um, and and why? Well, a lot of that happens with the development projects, 
And there's all kinds of things that sure. can, not because there's distress. No. It's just the nature of our, our industry. Of so course. when people invest, that's most that's most investments. Yeah. That's, I mean, unless I own a stock and I, yeah. I hit a button, that's instantaneous. Well, but. you'd be surprised because people are shocked. Like they were one. It's December one. Yeah. Noon. Where's my money? Yeah. They're they're scared. They're afraid. And I, no, no, no. Don't freak out. It's normal. And that and 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 you know if. I mean, this is not a liquid investment. It's illiquid, right? Like, yeah. you can't expect to get it right back right away. Um, if that's the case, you really shouldn't be in this product. No, you know, there's no. There's no other products that Absolutely. Because you you're, be you're locked in for the term. So yeah. midway through, if you have a crisis and you need that money, I mean, our company will do our very best to help move the money to another investor. Yeah. But... It's really challenging, so yeah. make sure you don't invest that money if that's for so. Them. So, Claire, this is you know this is for a certain you know demographic out there because we could take sixty six thousand and you know buy a little townhouse and campus casing if we wanted to or mm -hmm. whatever the case is. <laughs> um, but you decided this was good for you for your family. That hey, I don't want to do anything. I want someone else to do something, and I'll just enjoy the returns. I mean, talk right. to me a little bit about about the thinking um, of investing in mortgages as opposed to... Right, yeah. right. So this, exactly, it's passive. So just in terms of effort, it's very minimal effort, just doing the paperwork, and then it's like clockwork. Every month yeah. you're receiving it. So it's very, um, very, you know, it's it's a sure thing, basically. Sure. So, and then, I mean, one of the things I was thinking about for this money, actually, was I had the consideration to purchase a vehicle or to lease a vehicle, so I thought, well, I might as well, I could either buy a vehicle, which is a depreciating asset, or I could basically leverage this money, and then just even the monthly that you're getting can go towards a lease. Smart. Smart. And, and so then smart. it's basically, right it's it's net mm -hmm. net, yeah. it's kind of zero, of you know, course. if you know what I mean. So, so you're taking that 60, smart. but because you, this will, you, you, we're not encroaching this. I mean, right. you have the 66, it's there. It's spitting you out your car payment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And it's the same philosophy with, borrowing money on your home. So a lot of people have all this equity and they just it's debt equity. It's just sitting there. So you can borrow today and it's still really low rates, like two point two point seven. Well yeah. and today I, I just I'm closing on a, another property, it's two point four percent. Right? So if you take that money and, and and you have this equity and even if you take out two hundred thousand dollars, that is invested and it pays your mortgage payment, which is also your principal repayment, yeah. plus cash flow. Why You're saying somebody has a six, seven hundred thousand dollar property. Take two from it; it's paid for. Right. Take two hundred, so now you yeah. have two hundred thousand dollars mortgage. I'm not mortgage, saying take out everything. But lend it out, ah. and it services the debt. Plus, you yeah. get to. We actually, we to, actually did that. Oh, you did. Good for you. That <laughs> was the one we did. Yeah. 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 Well, it's smart. Yeah. Yeah. And it also is great for people that are in the retirement years. You know, where they, you know, they're living really a, a tight lifestyle. They, you know, they don't have much money based on their pension. And um, I've, I've done it for many people. And we refinance their home. And then we take the money we invested. Their mortgages are paid for. And now they have And they few, still get to live there. Yeah, they get right. to live there. They get to travel now. And yeah. I've done it with, for so many of our clients. And they're so happy with that. And what's interesting to me is, you know, you could have taken whatever, 200000 and did one deal. You, you've diversified in three different deals, three different locations, mm -hmm. three different developers, you know? So there is yep. a bit of a diver diversification there too. Somebody might right. say, hey Claire, why do you have this all in mortgages? Why aren't you diversified? Well, you kind of are diversified because you're in three different places, three yeah. different projects, three different developers. Yes, right? and, I, and I do still have some RSPs that are in different vehicles too. So I do have some stocks and bonds and things like that. So yeah. it is part of an overall strategy. Yeah, good, good, good. And so what's next? What, what are you? Um, uh, you know what actually might be next is I think I think definitely when this one matures, as we were talking about earlier, I'll definitely roll it over, and the other ones that I've got in terms of RSP, I'll just roll it over. So hopefully there's yeah. some more great oh, projects coming out. Coming out. Um, so that'll that'll definitely be a strategy ongoing, and then I might look at a little you know active investment somewhere as well too. Yeah. So that might be on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, with that, and and you know, I grew up doing that. My first one was when I was 16. And I'm 45 now. Yeah. Uh, so almost 30 years ago, um, with my mom in Kingston, Ontario, there's cash flow. Yeah. People call it passive, but it, that's not passive. There's, yeah. there's, you know, you're the landlord, or you have to, you know. I mean, this is, this is kind of good stuff. There. Thanks for so much for being on the show, and uh, look forward to hearing what you do in the future. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. We're uh, talking to Claire how she's making money investing in mortgages. We're not done yet. We have another everyday investor coming on to show how she's making money investing in the mortgage world. Thanks for watching, everyone. Did you know that all mortgage transactions are registered through a lawyer? Lawyers are involved to protect you, the investor, confirming clear title and that security is registered on the property.
Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We are talking to Carmen Capernero, guest hosting with me today, uh, bringing on different investors. Ed Wells was here from Community Trust, learning lots uh, in the world of investing in mortgages using our registered funds. Now we get the uh, pleasure to talk to Ellie Quinn. Ellie, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Quinn, Irish. Yes. And are you f- born husband, here or there? That's my husband's last name. Actually. Oh, I yeah. see. Your husband. Was yeah. he born there or born here? No, he's uh, from Ottawa, basically. Uh, uh. Previously. Okay, great. Yeah. My wife is uh, Sinead McCann, was mm-hmm. her maiden name, and she came over when she was 10, 11, 12. It's a beautiful oh, place. Come around been to Ireland? I want to see oh, it. Yeah, you have to go. It's I beautiful. So I had a chance to go, and it's yeah. amazing. I yeah. want to see that whole thing, all the old The Ring of Kerry, and, and, and oh yeah. my gosh. Amazing. Yeah, and that's, that's why great. we do this. We can invest yeah. our, our money, mm-hmm. get a little bit of money, and be able to travel, enjoy a little bit. Yes. Uh, all that kind of uh, good stuff. So, Ellie, you um, um, have been in, introduced to the world of investing now for how long? You're with a a group of people, a network of, of mm-hmm. people, mutual mm-hmm. friends of ours, Carmen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Key Spire, yes. Michael uh, Saraceni, and of course, Scott McGilvery. Everybody yeah. knows him, and they know yep. his new house. I think he's got a new show, yeah. you know, moving the McGilvery. So you're you're part of um, uh, that network of investors, yes. um, and that's where you were introduced to, to Carmen Pro Funds. Absolutely, yes. Yeah? Yes. And so do you enjoy that? Is it good? Is it helpful? It's been fantastic. I love it. Do you? Good. Yes. I'm glad. We were strictly doing stocks prior to this, and uh, ever since we got introduced to pro funds, uh, we're moving things over into mortgages. Okay. Loving it. Yeah. Uh, it's really great. Great. Yeah, we get that general consensus. People are very happy that they get to see the returns immediately. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're not waiting. And it's secured on real estate, so there's security there and a comfort of knowing yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. it's good. and as this is the topic of our show, you can use registered monies, and yeah. whether it's a an individual mortgage or whether mm-hmm. it's a group mortgage. I mean, that's a because again, mm-hmm. we cannot use our own registered funds to buy our own personal residence or even our own personal investment property. Um, so, if we can lend it out and make a great return on on these 12, mm-hmm. 13, 14. Uh, percent. That's a great thing. So you are um, embarking on an investment right now. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. So sure. where's this one uh, located? It's in London, Ontario. It's in London. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, not. Uh, and, and and that's a, that's the great that's the great thing about investing. Um, really, any kind of investment. You know, we do it with our stocks. It's not mm-hmm. like all oh, you you live where? Where are you from? Carlisle. Carlisle. Ontario. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not like the when you were investing in stocks that the companies that you were investing were located in Carlisle. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, when we get into real estate investing, our nature is to want them to be in our own backyard. That's yes. right. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. But it's not necessarily the case. Uh, even furthermore, um, when we are investing in mortgages, I mean, who cares where it is? Um, well, you know. I care. There's there's some places I, I, you, I wouldn't want to put my. No, money no, no, no. On. I'm saying yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. great place. Like, yes. Let's say let's say Carmen, you had a great. A place in, you know, in Kelowna, BC. Yes. You know, you, there's yes. a great opportunity. Oh, I yeah. live in the promised land of Brampton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought there wasn't enough Indians there, so I'd move there. <laughs> um, if it's a great deal, yeah. what do I care no, if it's in Mississauga? I, I or, agree with that's you. That's what I mean. And we do actually lend all over Canada. We yeah. have stuff in um, New Brunswick and Newfoundland, and um, we've done stuff in uh, Vancouver, yeah. and we just closed a deal in North Bay. Yeah. I mean, we do things all over the place. That's my you're point. right; it does have to be a good, a good. If it's a good project, it absolutely. doesn't matter where the geographic location, yes. mm-hmm. you yes. know, um, is. Well, this is a great property because this is um, 47 townhouses, and the first block of 20 have already been built. Okay. So they they are actually un- already built and completed and being rented as we speak. And phase two is the balance, so there's 27 units that we're building there. Yeah. And it is a project that is owned by Valor Capital, the company itself, so it's not lent to a third party. Got it. Um, and it's and pretty And it's always exciting. great when we can when we can invest in inside an already in re, an established residential development. I mean, yeah, are, it's beautiful. It's are, in a great neighborhood, good. and um, actually the exit on that will be sold to the up-and-coming ProFunds REIT that we're launching. So. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, that's for a different show. That's a different real estate, show. Real Estate Investment Trust. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, um, Ellie, we uh, are in London. We live in Carlisle. And we invested how much into this deal? The minimum, which was $50,000. $50,000. Yeah. And you use registered funds. What, what yes. vehicle? RSP. RSPs? Mm-hmm. So you move the RSPs from wherever they were. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, they're in stocks. Yes, in a big, at a big bank, yes. Yeah, and then you pulled them back, and yep. then you were at the bank, and then we moved them to uh, Community to Trust. Community trust. Yep. And now we uh, point, self-direct the, these funds 
to our project of townhouses in mm -hmm. London. Yep. And this is a 50K that you put in. So what is the term on this? How long? 24 months. Yeah. 24 years. months. Yeah, two years. Okay, so this is a two-year project. And um, what is your ROI on that? 12% uh, annually. 12% uh, annually. Okay, yep. so you're going to make 12% per year. Which is actually made up of 7%. 7%, up front, okay. Um, and then 5% lender bonus at the end. Okay, so 7% up front, like up front, up front. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yes. well, actually, you're Wait, right. I, I actually did do it up front, That yes. was an option. Yes, there's and two then options, 5 yes. And 5% at the end. Yeah. So often what we do is we offer the investors the opportunity to either take their interest payments that they would normally get monthly yeah. and they have a choice to take it as a lump sum payment up front. Okay. But, you know, some people like the monthly payments because they want to see it coming, they've borrowed mm -hmm. funds and they want to see it going so into the account. So what you're saying, we had, some... we had Claire on and she was making $385 a month yeah. for the year. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's an option, instead of her making the 35, 385 per month, she could have made the 4600 or whatever right up front. Right. So I'm actually in for less, but I get the same return, yes. which increases my ROI. Correct. Right. And then on top of it, you can take that mm -hmm. interest earned and you can reinvest it again and make more money on it. So if you do that calculation, I'd like... Why are you I'd so like... smart? Why are you so smart? Yeah. <laughs> Don't upstage me. Carmen. Don't upstage me. Okay, so that's fantastic. So, so we're making, we put in 50, 12%. So this uh, should really equal, I don't know what it equals, 6K, I think, right? Over Overall, right? 12% of $50,000 is, is $6,000 um, that you're making, but your, your ROI is, is going higher because you get the 7% paid up front. It so ends up being about a 13.3% return a year on your money when you take the interest payments up front because you're really... Taking yeah, I'm, less putting yeah. I'm putting out less. I'm putting out less because seven percent. If I get that up front on fifty, is thirty five hundred dollars. Correct. It's thirty five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and and so instead of putting in fifty thousand dollars, I minus it here. I mean, I know it doesn't probably work that way, Carm. Yeah. You'll probably give it forward and then get the money right yeah, back. Yeah, but just from a but just a from just a show, mm -hmm. it's fifty k minus thirty five. I'm still. This is still what my projected ROI was. Um, 50k minus 35 is I'm in really for 46,500. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what really what I'm in for, but I'm still going to get the same amount of money back. So when you do the math on that, it increases. It's not necessarily 12 percent. You're saying it's 13 percent. Yeah. Whatever. 13.35 yeah. or something like that. But okay. yeah, it ends up being like that in this case, and we do that quite often. So people actually have the choice to take that money in advance. Works out really well for people. Yeah, well, of course. I'm giving you, you know, and so it's probably there's some legal reasons or, or technical reasons that why we give it all first, why she gives the 50 first, then gets a check back right away for 35. Yeah, I, I think it, it had to do with um, CRA and, and tax got it, got it, got it, got it. things and they didn't want any complication or a misunderstanding of how that money was. Yeah. So we wanted to, and, and then in some cases um, over the years, people thought, hey, where's my return? I, I gave the money, but I didn't get anything back, and they forgot that they got that money up front. Yeah. Right. So we like to actually have a paper trail, yeah. right? So people say, oh, yes, here's my money I went in, and here's mm -hmm. the money that I got back, and every, everybody's happy. Got so it, it works it. out really well. So it's just a matter of, of accounting and things like that. That's why we do it that way. Yeah, no, that's right. So, yeah, you're right. It brings it up to about 13%. So it's not really, it's not a 12% anymore. It's 13% because I'm, I'm making... Um, six thousand dollars when it's all done um not on 50 i'm making six thousand dollars on my 465. exactly you got it yes mm -hmm. got it yeah Actually, i'm a, I'm a <laughs> ah, slow the cooker, ball. Slow the cooker. Ball. i get it i get it no and, and it's great for people and you know what i appreciate carmen is you know there's different ways to do things we never break the law we never break rules um but we can be creative i mean that's Absolutely. that's how you, you you learn i mean people are watching the show and you know, we didn't know we could do this, right? We didn't know yeah. we could even lend money to somebody mm -hmm. and make some money on it. And yeah. uh, again, whether it's an individual group, whether it's to lending, you know, Ellie lending to Rav or lending, uh, uh, Ellie lending to Rav the developer. I mean, all right. different kind of strategies. Yeah. I mean, getting your money up front is, is, is very interesting, mm -hmm. uh, very exciting. So Ellie, what's, uh, what's next for you? Is this your first um, investment in mortgages? 
Uh, third, actually. Oh, this is your third. It's my third investment. Well, excuse me. It's just me. the most recent one. Got yes. it. Got yes, it. it's Got very it. exciting. And so, and then I'll ask you, and I think it's prudent and wise. You just kind of slowly, because you could have, let's say they're all fifty thousand. Right. You could have put one fifty in the first one. Yes. But you're just kind of going slowly and just seeing different products. Mm -hmm. And do, is that is that the thinking? Well, for me, I wanted to spread out the timing so when they end, ah, so that I, see. So I want to make like sure actual. that I can keep investing. So. Um, and it, it diversifies it as well. So yeah. time-wise, yeah, also property-wise as, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you have a family. You're doing this Lone Ranger. What what are you? No nope, family. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, what do uh, they think about uh, you getting into the world of real estate investing and joining the network and They're very, being busy with all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah. My I, so I I have a husband and two kids, yeah. and uh, my husband is involved in this as well. He has an RSP with Community Trust oh. and. Excellent. has done a pro funds investment as well yeah and my kids are just like they want to learn they, they just want to soak it how up how old are your kids 19 and 20. wow Wonderful. that's amazing. so it's a perfect age perfect yeah. yes yeah oh no, it's fantastic yeah. I and mean, we didn't learn this stuff right my mm. no. uh, little indian mama from uh from <laughs> coming over here and nurse and she just worked so hard and put it under the mattress and i didn't yeah. learn it in church and i didn't learn it in school and i didn't so to, to yeah. you know your kids are blessed for you to yes. be able to uh could you imagine if we would have taken like just even 20% of our income since we were like kids, you know, right, the paper yeah. route, the newspaper route, you know, know, 20% and just invested it, invested it properly. I mean, we'd be done at mid thirties or whatever That's the case brilliant. is, you know, so <laughs> I'm teaching my 16 year old right now. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he, I make him take 20% of every dollar he gets to put in investing and Smart. and so on and so forth and so no that's great yeah. so um do they go to the networking events with you your kids my or? husband has um i'd like to bring one of my kids maybe the next one yeah, yeah. just so they can see what it's all about meet yeah. some people and i think it's great for yeah. them yeah it's such a great education mm -hmm. and so, uh, an opportunity so when people your your peer group when they uh you know when they knew that you were going to embark into a real estate network and you know put out whatever it is, three deals, I mean, um, let's just say a hundred, over a hundred grand or whatever the case. Was there negativity? Was there a don't do this? Haven't you read the headlines and all that kind of stuff? What was the reaction? Yeah, I, I would say so. People are worried about it because it's not something that we know too much about, yeah. right? Everybody yeah. thinks invest in mutual funds. Well, mm -hmm. gosh, I stopped doing that years ago because yeah. it just wasn't working for me and then moved to stocks and then got the opportunity to do this. So yeah, even myself, I was a little bit worried about it. I, I actually reached out to Carmen, and yes. uh, and uh, yeah. Carmen gave me a great. Can you teach response. me more, and yeah, because yeah, just what like what is the real risk here? Yeah. I was worried about that because it's just something I never really thought about. I've spoken and taught at you know some of the the different mm -hmm. outfits out there, including who you're with, and just a simple you know thing that I, I always share is that knowledge mitigates risk. The more oh, yeah. knowledge you have, then you understand. Oh, this is simple. How come I didn't know mm -hmm. this before? Well, listen. Uh, Ellie, very excited for you and your family, you. and especially your kids. Yeah, uh, it's very cool uh, what you're doing. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Yes. Uh, well, we, we talked to Claire, we talked to Ellie. We, we, we were learning how to make money investing in mortgages. Uh, stay tuned. We'll hear from Carmen, her closing thoughts in the world of investing registered money in mortgages. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions pertaining to this show or if there's a topic that you would like covered, please visit www.rogerstv.com. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We've had a phenomenal show talking to Ellie, Claire, Ed, learning how we can make money investing in mortgages using registered funds to be able to do that. If you missed it, uh, make sure you go to the uh, website, Rogers TV, to make sure that you watch this episode. Uh, here with my good friend, Carmen. Thank you for guest co-hosting. Oh, thank for you for being again. a friend. Thank you for being an <laughs> inspiration. Thank you for sponsoring the show. All that kind of stuff, Carmen. I know you really believe in uh, the everyday people out there making money to be able to invest, not because it's the most important thing, but it surely can help mm -hmm. uh, with the different things that we want to do in life. So from a, you know, a maternal point of view, for the <laughs> viewers at home that uh, know you well by now, I'm sure, uh, what would you want to say, kind of the closing thoughts in the world well, of investing? Well, you know, I was thinking about that and really quickly here, and I thought, 
really the important thing is is if you do get involved in this type of investment, it's who you're working with and understanding the, the due diligence behind the scenes and that people are actually looking after your best interests. And it's very, very important when you get into this industry because there might be other things out there in the industry that might not be as positive. So yeah. make sure you understand who you're working with, uh, focus on the information that's delivered, uh, make sure that you get your appraisals and you do your own due diligence. Yeah, no, and well said. And, and, and talk to people that, that are, have gone ahead of you and that are investing in these types yeah. of things, you know? How do you find, how is, it, how is the communication, um, uh, are, are the returns what the, the, they said they should be? Uh, no, very well put. Established companies, we've been around for 20 years. Yeah. I'm not just saying to, to plug ourselves or anything like that, but go with someone that has been around for a little while and that yeah. you know that they're, they're doing their homework on every investment that you're getting into. Yeah. It's critical. Carmen, thank you so much for, you. Uh, for being on the show. Can't wait to, uh, well, we get to talk weekly because you, we, we talk about mortgage rates, but I can't wait till you're on the show again. Thank you. Uh, with my good friend, Carmen uh, Cabernero, and on behalf of Rogers TV and myself, Raptor, we'll see you next week, same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>